Hello, everybody. David Burns, good to be with you. And I'm glad that I'm here with you today. Look at my background. The background looks like uh, some kind of a screenshot or something, but it's actually, I'm in the home of Dr. John Zavishlock. And he's back there, sitting back there in the screen. Come on up, John, and say hi to everybody. And I'm having trouble with the internet tonight. It's a little bit spotty. So we're going to try to muscle through. It's kind of storming here in Little Rock. But John and I are here in Little Rock working on a beekeeping project together. And uh, so fingers crossed that we can make this uh, internet work tonight. Uh, so good to be with you guys tonight. We're thankful to have our hostess, Jessica Fairfax, with us tonight. Thank you, Jessica. And Sherry's behind the scenes making it all happen. And we've got a whole bunch of, of uh, little mice peddling the internet, trying to make it go faster. So we'll see if we can make this internet work. Kind of rainy down here in Little Rock, Arkansas today, so. Yeah, you, we had great weather all week. Yeah, And then yep. you brought this rain. I don't know why you did that. I need the rain in my house, so. <laughs> well, you can take it home when you go. Yeah, I will. Okay. <laughs> so tonight I wanna to talk to you guys about some uh, cool stuff. We got some great things planned. We got a couple of guests that we're gonna bring in in just a little bit here. But I wanna start by talking about some beekeeping equipment. Um, one of the things that a lot of beekeepers struggle with is wearing the right kind of protective gear. Now, I know when I first started keeping bees, I was scared to death of bees. I mean, I did not want to be stung. And so I tried to wear everything possible to keep myself from getting stung. So I wanted to kind of take you guys through some of the things that beekeepers wear. And I want to let you know which ones work, work for me and which ones don't. But I want to start by saying that Basically, with beekeeping, there is uh, a few options like the whole bee suit or the hat and veil are just the jacket. So that's what it boils down to in beekeeping. And personally, I kind of decide on what I'll be doing to determine what I want to wear, right? Like if I'm going to do a cutout, take bees out of a house and I'm going to be there a long time, disturbing them immensely by destroying their their actual comb and everything. I want to be suited up all the way, duct tape, anything and everything. But if I'm going to go inspect my own hives that I know that are calm and I, I kind of know their personality, then I just make sure I light my smoker up and I'm usually happy with either just a hat and veil or a jacket. Rarely do I wear an entire suit. So it kind of depends on what you're doing to determine what you need to wear. Now, some of you, I have, I've known that some of you oftentimes wear shorts and sandals and a tank top. You have, you, you're a lot braver than I am. I would never do that. To me, that seems way too risky. It's okay when you think, you know, I know these bees, they're calm, I can get away with it. But it doesn't take much at all for that to go the wrong way. For example, if all at once you have like a wasp or a yellow jacket or a bumblebee, start attacking your open hive, well, then all at once, all your bees will get pretty defensive, even toward you, because now they're riled up over that one incident with, uh, you know, a foreign insect kind of coming in there. So you always want to take precautions and be ready for the worst. Um, sometimes what I do, if I think I am working a very calm colony, I'll go ahead and bring my gloves and I'll bring my jacket and everything, even though I may start out with my hat and veil, and I want that nearby. I've made several videos, and you may remember these, where I started out with a hat and a veil, but they kind of got a little defensive on me, so I had to suit up and put the gloves on. So let me show you a few things here. Now, this is pretty um, common to wear a hat and veil like this. Let me put it on. Um, this is pretty affordable, actually. You can buy these off Amazon pretty cheap. And they're just kind of like a cowboy hat. And I like the round ones. It keeps the uh, mask off of your face. So if the wind blows, these, these have a bigger rim, so it doesn't blow the veil against your face so likely. So if this sits flat against your face, then a bee could land there and sting through the veil. So, uh, you know, these kind of look cool. They're stylish. You look kind of neat wearing these. Um, and a lot of you know that I have one that I'm going to show you in just a minute where I put a piece of plastic in there. 
Uh, this is pretty common too. This is similar. This is all made out of cloth. I'm not going to try to put this one on, but it's not much more than just a hat and veil. It pulls down onto your the shoulders of the shirt or something that you're wearing. Now, these that I've shown you so far are round. But if you look at this one, I am going to try to put this one on. This is more like a parka, uh, like a coat that you wear. Now, these are good, too, because, again, they keep bees from getting on your face. Now, I've tried to use these style before when I'm taking bees out of houses, and they don't work well. Because I usually have to look up when I'm working up above, and that makes this whole thing fall against my face. And then that becomes... Uh, too risky for bees to sting my face because the screen's touching the face. It won't really hold it out. But if you're inspecting a hive and you're looking down, it works very nicely. So just keep that in mind. It's, it really has to do with what you're doing, what the occasion is. And look at this. I got this from the Flow Hive that I purchased. It came with a hat and veil. Now, this hat and veil looks more... Um, <laughs> not as durable for me to, the, the, I don't think it's very thin material and it's kind of a small hat. It's not a big rim on it. And this stuff, is, it's going to blow in the wind. It's very thin. I don't know if you can tell that it's just like mosquito netting or something. So I would be leery of wearing this. Now I would wear this in a pinch, but this wouldn't be a go-to netting that I would use just because it's so thin and can be blown around in the wind so easily. And now Sherry doesn't like this one at all. She says, I don't like that one. I wear this all the time and I love it, but she's, she thinks it looks terrible. But look at this. This is the one that I made and I actually cut out the screen and I took a piece of grinding, uh, grinding shield plastic and I put some silicone and let it dry overnight. And you'd be amazed how much better you can see when you use a piece of plastic versus the netting. Now, there are companies that make this that actually you can cut it and then snap it together. You don't have to use the ugliness of it, but this does look terrible. I just made this in a pinch, do it yourself. And uh, funny, I made this video. It was like, do it yourself. Put a piece of plastic in your veil, you see better. And then everybody was like, don't you know they already make that? I was like, yeah, I know. I was just, this is just do it yourself or kind of stuff, you know. But I do like that. Um, you have to kind of plan it better. My, my plastic's a little bit too high. Um, but what I like most, what I wear the most is this right here. You've seen this in all my videos. Um, it's just a bee suit. I don't know who made this one. Um, I can't tell. But there are a lot of companies that are right now um, making a lot of different bee suits. This is a round hat and veil. It's vent, it's ventilated across the front and the sleeves. Now there are many companies that make totally ventilated um, jackets, and I do like them. I met a guy at the uh, in Ohio at the last meeting we had over there with the content creators, and um, can't remember the name of his company now. It escapes me close, but I can't get it. But um, I like his style of jackets. I think they're like 99 bucks for a pullover. I don't need the zipper. Uh, you know, they make them where they're just a pullover jacket, a one piece. You don't have to zip the hat down. You don't have to zip the front. I would prefer that. I would just prefer to pull that on to myself rather than having to, because I always forget to zip it up. And I'm thinking, why are these bees in my hat? <laughs> oh, I didn't zip the, the hat down. Hey, thank you for that super sticker. I appreciate that. Now let's talk about gloves. Um, I guess uh, the idea of a bee suit for me is that all beekeepers really should wear a bee suit, uh, but not the whole suit usually, or blue jeans or, or some type of pants are going to be enough if your hives are, are you know, modestly gentle, not too bad. If you know your hive is real defensive, then yeah, you need to wear your jeans, a full bee suit, and then you might need to wear a couple of pair of socks, some boots that goes up into your suit and maybe duct tape that gap. <laughs> I've done that so many times. I One time a gentleman asked me to, to kill a queen in a very defensive hive. And I thought, eh, can't be that bad. I've worked some defensive hives before. It was, it was bad. They attacked my smoker. It was terrible. They attacked my screen on my, on my hat and veil. I couldn't even see out of it. They were after my breath that hard. So in a case like that, if you have a real defensive colony, be, be wearing everything you can. 
Um, what's my opinion about wearing shorts and sandals and tank tops? Um, I, I just don't think it's a good idea you, you, because you're setting yourself up for being in a situation where you wish maybe you had something more on. Now you can wear all of that under your jacket or your bee suit, you know, stay cool under there. That brings up a good topic though. I got more to share about the gloves, but what do people wear under a bee suit or a bee jacket? That's a pretty tough question. I made a video once where I didn't want to, I was, I knew I had to do a scene like this where I had to wear my shirt. Well, when I work my yards, I get my shirt soaking wet. So I just took my shirt off and I put my jacket on. So I was working my, you know, hive and my, making my video. And then when I looked at it, it looked kind of weird not having a shirt on when I unzip my hat and set it back. My friend John back there even said, did you not have a shirt on under your beef suit? <laughs> you yeah, know, the topless I was I was like a topless beekeeper, you know, and, and it did get me did not get me any more views, by the way. <laughs> so, you know, whatever. <laughs> Oh, I should have made that my thumbnail or a topless beekeeping or something. But um, I, I I don't know. I feel like that if I'm going to work a hive that's defensive, then I want another layer underneath that bee suit, you know, just like a shirt, uh, something that, that gives me that added layer. Bee suits are designed to go over your existing clothing. Do you want to buy them a little bit bigger so they're baggier on you? So stingers are very smart, uh, are very small, short. What's the size of a stinger, John? Like <laughs> 1.5 millimeters, is that right? I don't know, but they're pretty short. So, you know, you just need something to keep it from um, going through maybe the netting on your ventilated spots on your on your suits or something. Um, but I, I don't think, I've, I've had people work bees with me that wore shorts or tank tops and all, and it, it really bothers me. It, I think it's fine if that's your thing, but I would never do that. And probably if you were working bees with me, I wouldn't let you do that. I'd make you put a suit on just to be safe. But I understand everybody has their different way of doing things. And I'm not going to tell you how to do it, but I want you to be safe. Now, let's talk about some gloves. Uh, gloves are one of those things that are kind of iffy. Like, should I wear gloves or should I not wear gloves? When I first started bee beekeeping, I wore gloves. I was scared to death of being stung. But as I got a little braver, I started taking off my gloves and trying to handle frames without gloves. E even to become a certified master beekeeper, we prefer that you not wear gloves unless you have a medical condition that, you know, like anaphylactic shock or something, uh, then we make exceptions. So it is good because you have more dexterity when you don't have gloves on to handle frames. I think you're less likely to drop them. Uh, drop a frame or, you know, there's no way I can mark a queen with gloves on. I've tried it before and it just doesn't work out well. So there's a lot of things that you do in beekeeping that requires no gloves. Here's the thing. If you're, if you're a glove wearer and you would never work bees without gloves, but you want to learn how, what you should do is go out there, see how the temperament of your hive is. And if it's going really good, the weather's right and everything, then smoke them really good. Take off one glove, just one and try it and see how it goes. You know what I mean? Just ease your way into being a gloveless beekeeper. <laughs> so let's talk about gloves. Now look, um, here are some nitrile gloves, nitrile gloves. They're more like for handling chemicals or if you're using Formic Pro pads or something, you know, and you don't want to get the acid on your fingers. Uh, these are nice, uh, I think they're latex uh, nitrile, but um, I usually wear these and oftentimes I wear these not to be sting proof, but to keep the propolis just from being on my fingers. It's easier for me to take these off than to get propolis all over my hands and have to get alcohol, get the propolis off. So these are very effective if you just want to do that. But I think bees can easily sting through these, though they haven't me. They haven't stung me through those. I show you something that has been sting proof for me, and I don't think they're advertised as, as sting proof, but these have been featured in a lot of my videos. Now, these are rubber beekeeping gloves. Beneath the rubber is canvas, uh, even beneath, well, I think uh, some of them. I don't know if this one does, but so they're they're pretty bulky. And these, I've never been, I've seen stingers get stuck into the rubber, 
but they've never made it into my fingers. So if I have to, sometimes I have to use my fingers in an activity the next day that's real critical. Um, so what I do, if I know that event's coming up where I need the use of my fingers and I can't afford to have a little swollen or stiff finger, I will put these gloves on just to protect myself. So th these are really good. And I think most beekeeping stores sell these if you're looking for these. I'm gonna say maybe Man Lake, I'm not sure. Um, there's another one that I, that's similar to that, and it's chemical resistant gloves. I've used these in a lot of my videos. Now, these I bought off Amazon for some really inexpensive amount, like eight dollars. I don't know. Don't quote me on that, but they're pretty cheap, and uh, they're chem rest. You can look them up on Amazon, and they are really interesting. I like these because they have some real grippy surface on here. You can feel the little texture on it. And so they grip frames really well. They're thinner than the big blue ones. But one word of caution, when you get hot and sweaty, they smell really bad. It's weird. They have a really foul odor to them when they get uh, sweaty. So I just take them off, turn them inside out, let them dry out. Now these are more common. These are some of your typical goat skin, uh, real soft leather gloves that you can buy and they got ventilation uh, here like that. Now these gloves, again, they have no dexterity for me at all. I, I just can't work bees very well with gloves on, but I do wear them if I have to do something that is gonna require a lot of bees to be after me. And so do you have any questions about, um, I'll take a couple of questions, you guys, if you wanna post them up there about any of the um, things that I've showed you here. If you're dying to ask me a question about protective gear that you might wanna wear, I think that the key is just being very careful that you have enough to protect yourself uh, when you're uh, working your bees. So you have time to do your inspection. You don't want to run out of time because, you know, the bees are stinging you on the legs or the hands or something. You don't want to abandon your inspection that you need to do. Um, one, one note, too, is to make, make sure that you think about your socks. A lot of beekeepers don't realize there's a gap sometimes between maybe your tennis shoes and your pants leg or the end of your bee suit. And I guarantee you, your bees, they, they are raised. They, they know how to find that little gap and stitch your socks to your ankles. A uh, good question about how to wash your bee suits. A lot of people um, wash them in the washer machine and dryer. I do not advise that. There's too much yucky stuff on your bee suits to put them in your nice washing machine. There's propolis, there's all kind of wax that's going to get maybe stuck in your washing machine. It's not a good idea. Take a bucket of water, like a five gallon bucket, mix it with water, soapy water and vinegar, and just do your own little hand washing of your bee suit. You got to take your top off, take your, your hat off if it unzips off your bee suit. It's really never a good way to wash your top of your hat or anything. Because of the netting, it can be uh, burnt up in the dryer or something. I, I will say that one time I tried to, I, I collected a big ball of propolis one time and I put it in my bee suit and I forgot it was in there. And back in those days, I was still learning that you're not supposed to wash your bee suit in your washer and dryer. That big blob of propolis just destroyed the dryer. Oh my gosh, you can imagine that propolis just started getting melty and oozing out and got all over the dryer. So that's why I don't think you should run your bee suit through the washer and dryer. Unless you have one of those washer and dryers out in your garage or something, you do old dirty rags in, something like that. Pressure washer is not a bad idea from the big mountain uh, honeybee. Uh, yeah, you can pressure washer it. But look, you're never going to get that suit looking good. All right, that's just all it is to it. We should have a contest here on my live stream about who has been keeping bees at least, let's say, one year and has a beautiful bee suit. See who has the whitest bee suit. I think the person that I think has the worst looking bee suit, the dirtiest looking bee suit, is Kent Williams. <laughs> Kent Williams always has just such a, uh, uh, let's say, I don't want to call it dirty, but a hard working, hard working bee suit for sure. Do you think hand lotions or smells from certain fragrances will alarm bees? You know, that's always a possibility. I would never exclude that. Uh, bees are attracted to things that smell like flowers. 
And so if you're attracting them to that, it certainly could be something to work with. But I don't know if that's going to really cause them to you know, start stinging you or anything like that. But it could be something that's like that. Yep. All right. I want to move on. And uh, let me just look through my notes, see if I covered all the things. Uh, I believe I did. Yep. I'm going to bring. Oh, thank you, Brian Bennett, for your uh, donation. I appreciate that. Moving on now. I'm going to introduce you guys to two special people. As you know, YouTube um, forced us or uh, kind of told us that we had to pick a name for uh, what we call ourselves on YouTube. So I picked Beak. Beak means you're a beekeeper. It's short for beak. And then, I don't know, it's got the idea of Beak Squad. I thought that sounded kind of cool. We could call all of you guys Beak Squad members. Woo! Beak Squad. And so uh, we came up with the idea of a little bit of a logo for Beak Squad. And then Sherry and I thought, you know, we need to make a shirt, a hat, something like that. Maybe some of you would like coffee cups or hats or something like that. And lo and behold, uh, a, few, a couple of our viewers uh, worked together in making Beak Squad uh, or making um, merchandise. And they said, hey, we can make that for you. So I want to introduce to you more team members along with Jessica helping us and Sherry. Now we have our merchandise people here today. We have Robbie and Candy. Hey, guys. Hi. Good afternoon. Good to Hi, see Dave. you guys. And uh, so what's it like being uh, handling the merchandise for us? It's been wonderful. Thank you all so much for your orders. We're, um, we're doing great, actually. We're up to about 40 orders, and um, a lot of those orders have multiple multiple content. So we're, we're very thankful for them. So thank you. Hey, thanks so much. Uh, I really like uh, Candy's creations, and we're happy to help you guys uh, uh, help us. So that's really working out well. And, you know, one of the things I, I want to apologize uh, to you, Candy, I, I, apparently in one of my videos, I put a link to your website, you know, where they can buy our merchandise. But some of the people started emailing you with beekeeping questions or they wanted to talk to me. And that's not what you do, is it? I have no idea about the bee stuff. So that's definitely your expertise. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, if, you, if you're trying to contact me, uh, just remember that there's our link right there on the screen that you can order your Beak Squad merchandise. And uh, I got Robbie. Hey, Robbie, how are you doing? I'm, I'm good tonight, Dave. How are you? Good, good. Now, you are a beekeeper, right? I am, yes. So she, she okay. came to me how with the question. Hives, how okay. <laughs> how many hives are you wanting right, uh, right now I have... Um, Nine full hives and two nukes. Okay, cool. Yep. And uh, just, I forgot, uh, Candy, uh, where do you live? What I live state? in Seymour, same in Indiana. Oh, Indiana. Okay. Yeah. And you too, Robbie? Yep. Okay, Indiana. Wow. How far are you, uh, how far are you, were you from Ohio when we met over there? You were pretty um, close. Probably. Yeah, I think it was a, a little over a two hour drive, two hours and 20 minutes. I, I'm a, we're about an hour north of Louisville is where we're located, right off the interstate. Oh, okay. You're close to the B Expo coming up, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Candy, for the long sleeve black beak squat shirt. Us ladies also like V-necks. There you go. Get we can get them. You can get the, you can get the V-neck, huh? We can. Send me an email and we'll get that squared away for you. How would I look in a V-neck? Not good? <laughs> I would probably go now. Sherry's saying, no, I won't look good. So It's a girl thing. <laughs> it's a girl thing. All right. Well, hey, listen, I'm excited, guys. Uh, Robbie and Candy are going to be doing something really cool, and uh, they may want to speak more about that, but I'm just going to tell you what we're going to do. Uh, for the Bee Expo coming up in 57 days, the Honey Bee Expo with Cayman Reynolds down there in Louisville, Kentucky, that's coming up in 57 days, so it's not, it's not that far away. I'll be speaking a couple of times there. We're going to look forward, and uh, Robbie and Candy uh, will be there as well. But what they're going to be doing is they're actually going to be taking orders now, and then they will bring your order to the B Expo. So you can pick it up there. And what I'm ho hoping that we can accomplish is that all of us can somehow coordinate a group photo together where we can all just get together, take a big photo of us standing somewhere. You know, I can envision maybe a couple hundred of us wearing our Beak Squad shirts. Robbie has one on right now. Uh, a little bit higher, Robbie. I can't see the logo. 
There you go, Beachbody logo or a hat or something. So order your merchandise, uh, the Beak Squad shirt or a hat or something, and that way we can all get together. I'll, I'll coordinate some way. I'll put it on my uh, YouTube channel before then, but we'll get ready to take a big picture down there at the North American Honeybee Expo. So uh, any, any special plans that we need to tell them about, Candy or Robbie, about ordering now and having those uh, brought out to the conference in January? Yeah, so I think the, the major thing is that if you order now, um, you get more of a variety. So anything on our website can be ordered now, um, and we will package it up and take it straight to the Expo Center for you. That saves you on shipping. Um, so those items include a sweatshirt, a long sleeve, a different colors, whatever it may be that's on our site. Or even if you want something different, send us an email um, and we can do it and meet you at the Expo. Um, and something that Dave doesn't know, we're also going to be offering these Beak Squad tumblers. Um, they are launching on our website tonight at 830. Um, so you can also order these um, and we'll bring them to the expo or go ahead and order your merchandise and we'll ship it to you if you want it before then. A tumbler? What are the, yeah. what are the, what are the top of it look like? Is it like a little drink spout? Oh, yeah, it yeah. Comes, And it also comes with a straw. Um, that I got around here, but it'll come with a straw, um, 20 ounce or 30 ounce, and it'll just have your Beak Squad logo all over it. Wow, nice. Very good. I love it. All right. Gonna, gonna go live at 8.30 tonight, huh? Yep. All right, cool. 8.30 Eastern. I know that okay. 8.30 okay. Eastern. Oh, four minutes then. Yeah, good. Yep. <laughs> all right. Yep. So other than that, we want to thank you uh, for your orders so far. And we look forward to, you know, meeting you guys at the expo. I think it'll be a lot of fun and we'll be there the entire time. We will be bringing some T-shirts, but we'll be limited quantities. Um, and I think it'll probably only be black T-shirts. So if you want something different, order it now and we'll either ship it to you or bring it to you, whichever you prefer. Oh, wow. Excellent. That's going to be really good. And you guys are going to be in our booth with us. And yep. so, you know, if you if you just look for my face on a sign or something and you'll know that's our booth, that's where the that's where the Beak Squad would be uh, with, this, with the shirts and the hats and the tumblers and all. That's great. Yep. Okay. Well, that's good. I really appreciate you guys doing that for us. You know, I've always wanted to have merchandise and uh, Sherry and I decided we just don't want to make any money off the merchandise. That's not of an interest to us. We just want to have a way to combine or kind of get our community together, some, some a logo, something that our our community could get behind and and kind of recognize us, uh, all the Speak Squad members. So thank you guys for doing that so much. That's great. Yep. And, and I think it helps too. This is my passion. Um, I've had this business for going on five years now, so we love it. So thank you so much for allowing us to to take this on for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Our pleasure. Uh, we really appreciate you guys doing it. I know it's uh, uh, it's a lot of work. And so hopefully nobody is going to ask you any more beekeeping questions. This, you ask questions here on the live stream. Don't email those questions. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I went to Robbie, actually, and I'm like, hey, what do I tell him? So he was helpful, yeah. but definitely directing them directly to you. OK. Yeah, <laughs> I understand that. OK. All right. Anything else, Robbie and Candy? No, I think that's all right, guys. Uh, well, Candy, uh, Candy uh, you, you mentioned that you've been to the expo and it's kind of chilly there. So the, the long sleeve or the sweatshirt might be the way to go. Oh, yeah. So cool. expo center is very cold. Um, so definitely dress appropriately. Um, so sweatshirt, crew neck, that kind of thing would definitely be beneficial. They keep the place very cold. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's good to know, too. Absolutely. <laughs> Very and there great. are places they have like a huge staircase that would be great for your picture. So oh oh that'd be great that big staircase. Okay yeah excellent. Yep well, that's good. perfect. Well okay it sounds like our our Beak Squad people are going to swamp you guys with some orders. So hopefully uh, you guys can keep up with things and, and bring a bunch of yep. stuff out to the Honey Bee Expo and uh, you got fifty seven days to get her done. <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you guys so much. Thanks. Well, I, I really appreciate you guys being a part of the team. We keep growing our Beak Squad live stream team. You know, it's like earlier we were trying to get ready to go on the air and there was uh, five of us here and we kind of drowned it out the internet. I think we drained it or something. So, but uh, we're always looking for more team members to make this live stream more successful. So it's great to have you two uh, on our team with us. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Talk to you guys later. Good night. Right. Good night. Bye -bye. Well, that was great meeting uh, Candy and Robbie. 
That was excellent. John's still back there reading his book like nothing's going on in the room. But uh, hey, this, this is a good time. Let me check my notes here. It's a good time for us to go ahead and take some questions, uh, regular questions and answer time. See what's going on with you guys in your beekeeping uh, world. It's 730. We've got about a half hour to really tackle some good questions and see what we can do to help you guys with beekeeping. I know a lot of you guys ask a lot of questions on my YouTube channel in the comments. And as you can tell, it's a lot of work to make videos and it's even more work to try to answer all the comments. But I do appreciate your comments. But this is the best place that you can answer, that you can ask questions. Thank you for your uh, uh, donation there. Keep up the great content. Any advice on planning before finding a swarm during springtime? Yeah, you know, you always when you when you think about catching a swarm, you want to have equipment to put it in, right? So you want to have either a five frame nuke box or you want to have a deep box, you know, something ready to put them in, some frames, bottom board, top cover. Got to put that swarm in something. You don't want to put them in a shoe box and have to wait two weeks for a bee company to send you something. So I used to drive around in, in, in days when I was out collecting swarms. I used to drive around with always in my car or truck. I had a nuke box, a smoker, hive tool, frames, bee suit. Because I'm mean, here one time, I, I would just pull up to a four-way stop sign. Guess what was hanging off one of the four, four-way four stop signs? It was a swarm. <laughs> I just pulled over and uh, swept it in and brushed it into my little five-frame nuke box and went on about my journey. <laughs> so if you have equipment, that's good. But you can always uh, bait swarms by putting some you know swarm traps up in the area, put a little uh, uh, swarm commander um, smell into them. See if you can catch a swarm early in the year, but just be ready. That's a good question. Absolutely. Thank you for your $3 super sticker, Michelle. I appreciate that so much. That's always awesome. Uh, appreciate you guys funding the mission. It costs a little bit to make things happen, so we always appreciate it. Hi, Joe in Florida, new beekeeper, just, uh, just year. My David feeder gets clogged up. How do I open the holes? Yeah, I think what you're dealing with are the little holes on your uh, jar lid is what you're probably talking about. And those little holes, when you add your protein powder, uh, they seem to get, they appear to be clogged up or sometimes they propolize them. And so you just need to take a little needle, something like a, even a tip of a drywall screw will work. Some way just to kind of brush that, uh, propolis off or the bee pollen or just uh, some real hot water, something just to open those up more. Uh, you can be creative and just open those holes up. Sometimes if it's really cold, you can kind of snap it on, you know, put them in the freezer and snap the propolis out of those holes too. Yep. I've seen that too. Hey, Jay, how are you doing? I found an unborn honeybee pushed out onto the landing board. It totally white. What may cause this? Okay, I'm not sure where you live, Jay, but it's likely going to be a drone. Uh, and it's, if it's white like that, I'm going to say it's a pupae or pupa. So it's probably a, a, a baby drone. And the bees sometimes this time of the year say, no, nope, we're not raising drones. We don't need to overwinter drones. But on the same, on the same um, note, it could be the hive is very hygienic. They could be cleaning out some of the the pupae that may have detected a foul odor or a certain kind of vibration that it might have been giving off from maybe having mites in there or something. It could be something like that, a very hygienic um, nature of a hive. Um, it could just be that the cluster got cold, depending on where you live, and they abandoned some of the brood and some of it died, and then it warmed up and they cleaned it out. But it's just it's just a part of beekeeping. You're going to see that. You don't notice it so much in the summer because there's a lot of cleaning going on and um, you just may not notice. Yep. Hey, Jason, how are you? I am a candy maker and I have a difficult time getting this candy board to work. Would love to know, oh, I'd love to have a how-to video. Uh, making candy, making candy boards is kind of tricky. I think the key is getting your water balance, your balance correctly with your sugar so that you can cook it rapidly. That's always, that always works better. That's how we make our winter be kinds. You want to get to that uh, maximum temperature as quickly as you can. Um, some things, if you go too slow, if your burner is not very hot, you just evaporate so much water out before you get there. 
Um, but getting to that temperature is key. But getting the water balance is is really, uh, I'll tell you, I'm going to go ahead and give you a little bit of secret. Now, we make them in large batches, but I have found that it takes, a, mm, yeah, it takes about 1 to 1 1.5 pounds of water per 10 pounds of sugar. Um, that, that equates to pretty darn close of getting that mixture just right. Uh, something like that. But that I only go by pounds because we make a lot of them. I can't do ounces. I can't break that down into smaller quantities. But that might just help you figure things out. About a pound and a half of water to 10 pounds of sugar. All right. Yeah, it's tough. I, I It depends on your altitude, your barometric pressure, the position of the moon and Jupiter. And if you have your fingers crossed just right, you know, getting that candy. Candy has always been challenging. It really is. Ours will actually change based on the humidity in the room that we're in as well. We have to adapt to that. Hey, Mark, how are you? Do bees of winter physiology last longer once they start foraging for food than bees of summer physiology? From what I understand, bees of winter physiology last longer, but once they start up again, either caring for brood or foraging, their life is really short after that. Yeah, you know, they, they just kind of are done. That They can work a little bit, but they run out pretty quickly. They're just made to kind of hunker down and wait and carry the hive over a little while. But after that, they do die pretty quickly. Yep. Is honey bound a uh, concern this time of the year? Um, you know, I'm going into winter and I, I want room for my bees to be laying brood of winter physiology, but I like a lot of honey on board. Um, so as it gets colder, and it, has, it hasn't been very cold around here, but as it gets colder, um, you don't really, you're not too concerned about the, the uh, hive being honey bound at that point. They're not raising a lot of brood when the, the hive starts clustering. But if they haven't clustered yet and they're still making brood, you know, like if you live in the deep south somewhere, then yeah, you don't want to be honey bound. You might want to take a few frames out and spin it uh, or do something, uh, swap some frames around. Depends on where you live. It's so it's so um, different based on whereabouts that you live, for sure. David, is smoking your gloves beneficial prior to, prior to working your bees? It could be. Um, you know, we always say that if you get stung on your skin, that you should smoke your area that you got stung on. You know, that's what beekeepers say. And the idea is that smoke smell kind of masks the alarm pheromone. So bees may not be able to detect that, oh, there's an alarm pheromone that's in the alarm, that's in the, uh, the venom sac uh, when you get stung. But on the other hand, um, you know, if you're not stung yet, and you just smoke your gloves, I don't know if it's gonna be all that much of an advantage. Now, I think some of the gloves, I've had people tell me that the goat skin gloves smell like goats and that bees feel that they're being attacked by an animal hide, the hide of an animal. So maybe if you smoked your goat skin gloves, you know, I don't have the final authority on anything beekeeping related. I just can tell you my experiences that I've had and what other people have told me, I guess. Oh my gosh. Hey, Ronnie, how are you? Should you take robbing screens, screens off when the weather gets colder? Yeah, I mean, if you get to a place where the robbing is over and now you're getting into winter, uh, bees aren't going to be foraging and they won't have much time to do much robbing. That You're probably pretty safe of pulling those off. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what I do. Bees seem to be robbing when they're really you know, getting ready for uh, clustering to go through winter. But once they kind of get into that mode of overwintering, they don't seem to go crazy even when it warms up a little bit, robbing hives out, unless it warms up for a long period of time. Yeah, you're probably pretty safe. Hey, Jason, how are you? Is it too late for bees to build brood? How can I build up my hive? I have one hive and I feel it's weak. I'm in north, uh, north corner of Arkansas. Well, I'm in the north corner of Arkansas, I guess. You know. No, you're right in the middle. I'm in the middle of Arkansas. Well, Northeast or Northwest? Uh, John wants, oh, it's Northwest. Yeah. So, John, is it too late to build up brood this time of the year in Arkansas? Uh, we're getting to the end of the floral season. I guess you could feed them a lot of protein. It would help a little. All right. John said we're getting to the end of the uh, floral season here in Arkansas in the Northwest. So you could start feeding them some protein, maybe. Protein, either a pollen patty, watch the beetles, 
or some protein in your sugar water. See if you can build up some brood. Yeah, maybe give it a try. Yep. Thanks, Jason. Royal. Hey, um, what do you think about Russian bee? I think uh, thinking about getting some because they're supposed to be good at fighting off the viral mites. Sounds like they are aggressive, though. Now, I I can't speak exactly with all authority on this. I'm going to try to pull up some memory thoughts out of this old brain of mine. But apparently there are some segments of the Russian bee breeders. There's like, I think, like two different types. There's one type that's very, very diligent in keeping their genetics, you know, very, very tight on the Russian bees. And they keep good records and all. And they seem to be doing a really good job at, at showing that, that some of these Russian bees that they are raising are very good against mites, fighting off mites. They've had a history of doing that. Um, on the other hand, I have gotten Russian bees, not from that organization, but just, you know, people that sell Russian bees. And they were very aggressive for me. And they swarmed a lot. And I didn't even have time to check for mites because I couldn't take the how aggressive they were. So, it, you know, I, it's really going to depend on where you get them, who you get them from. And it can, it can vary. So um, don't trust a queen to solve all your mite problems. That's the big takeaway message on that. Uh, select a queen that will help you reduce mites, sure, but don't let that be your only source. So I understand what you're saying. Um, I Hey, get one, Royal, and try it. Get one out, try it out. Do a mite test. Try and do a mite test on your other Italian hive. Do a mite test on your Russian hive. Um, see if one's more aggressive than the other. You're going to be the best judge of how you think that went. And hey, if it doesn't work out, you can kill the Russian and get and try another one. Good question, though. A lot of people talk a lot about that. Hey, Erin, how are you? Um, South Central Coast of California, average temperature 65 year round. We are all jealous, give or take a few degrees. I'm fairly new beekeeper. Do I need to worry about feeding as much as someone in cooler climates? Now, the thing that you're going to have to rely on is judging your floral sources. You're going to just have to see what's always in bloom. What are your bees bringing in? Take a look inside the hive. Are they storing stuff year round? Are they? Are you in a place where they're doing a good job always having things to uh, go out and forage for? And if that's the case, you don't have to worry so much about feeding. You're going to know that by looking inside the hive. What's in the brood nest area? Do they have a good rainbow effect of, of uh, pollen, bee bread, honey on the brood frames? Are they stripped out and don't have anything in there? That's going to be your answer, really. So don't always go by necessarily where you live or the season, because seasons are always different from year to year. Go by what's inside the hive. That's going to be better for you. Good question. California. Hi, Deb. Uh, since we're having a lot of warm weather, should I be concerned about having bees of winter physiology? My little ones are out digging in the corn chop, and uh, we are fluxing between uh, daytime 40 to 60 degrees. I know. I know. That's all of our questions. Absolutely. I made a video recently that basically said, uh, I said, you know, it's kind of bad when our bees uh, are kind of bunkering down for winter and then it warms up because what they do, they start eating through their winter uh, storage and they don't really have anything to replace it with unless we feed it that. Um, your bees of winter physiology, um, I don't know. Uh, I think they should be fine. Uh, some warm up, they're still going to hang in there and do good. They're, they're raising bees anyway. New bees are going to be emerging even past a warm spell of winter physiology. But should you be concerned? I don't think so. Let's don't be concerned at all. Let's don't worry about our bees. Let's enjoy beekeeping. It's okay. Let's uh, let's do the best we can. Let's do things that we know that's, that felt good and right for us to do with our hive. And then let's rest assured that, okay, bees, you're on your own. But I don't want anybody to lose sleep, get an ulcer, get migraines, worrying about your bees. It's supposed to be a fun, enjoyable hobby. And so... Um, Enjoy it. Don't don't spend too much time being overly concerned. Yeah. Oh yeah, we've had fifty percent 
off our online classes coming up on Black uh, Friday. It's going to be November the 24th through Cyber Monday the 27th. So if all of you uh, have been thinking about getting our online courses, we have seven of them online, maybe eight. And we have bundle packs where you can get them all in one. Uh, that'd be a big savings at half price. Um, that'd be good. So we'll uh, we'll leave a link on our, well, you can go to honeybeadsonline.com on Black Friday and take advantage of that. 50% off. Every year, people just take such advantage of that savings. So huh, we appreciate that. Helps us put a little bread and butter on the table. <laughs> All right. In Los Angeles, a lot of California viewers tonight. Okay. Had a hive swarm last month. Uh, six, seven frames of bees remaining. They seem to, to have rejected a mated queen. Should I try again or combine with another colony? Los Angeles, boy, it, it kind of depends. I guess if your weather isn't going to get too cold too rapidly, if you don't have too much of a cool, you know, winter there, you could certainly try to requeen it again. They might be requeening themselves kind of, um, and you're just not observing that maybe. So that, that could be, you know, you can go in there and they could have a virgin queen out on a mating flight and you just don't know how, where they're at. But um, keep combining as, um, as an option. Absolutely. So I would, if it was me, I would try to put another queen in there, a mated queen, see if they would accept her. And if they reject another one and there are down to six or seven frames of bees, um, yeah, you might think about combining them. But try try another queen, see how that goes. Hey, Jess, is it better to requeen spring or late summer? Uh Always better to uh, requeen in late summer. Absolutely. Because uh, the reason, you know, late, if you requeen in late summer, then we always feel like that we're going to get a queen that has stronger pheromones in the spring that could help control swarming. And it also is uh, less likely for us to, you know, have to worry about losing our queen in the spring or something and not be able to get one. Sometimes in the spring, a lot of queens go into packages, nucleuses, early spring. You can't, it's hard to find a queen in early spring. So it's better to come out and get a little bit further away from spring when queens are more available. So yeah, definitely late summer on requeening that hive for sure. A lot of reasons too. Uh, most people conclude that requeening a hive in the summer does this incredible things. I, I, and I agree. I took your course last year and I reviewed a lot. Great classes. Well, thank you, Jess. I appreciate that. Yeah. Glad you enjoyed the classes. Put a lot of work into that. So appreciate it. Hey, Henry in East Tennessee. Well, I, I grew up in uh, West Tennessee. So you're on the other end of the state, which is like 20,000 hours away. Uh, I'm in East Tennessee and I have a queenless hive with a laying worker. Can I introduce a new queen in the hive? Oh, my gosh. That is so difficult, isn't it, to be faced with that. Um, we actually have an in-house resident uh, expert on laying workers. John, get up here. Hurry. Come on. John, uh, I need John to answer this question. Oh, I don't really think about laying workers. John, John makes presentations on laying workers. No, never happened. I've seen all your good presentations. No, I don't believe it. What you mean? What's the question? He's in East Tennessee, has a queenless hive with a laying worker. Mm -hmm. Can I introduce a new queen in this hive? You got to get up close to the mic, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, it's possible if you can get a mated queen still this time of year. If not, uh, I might be inclined to just combine that colony with another colony this time of year. Yeah. Uh, let, them, let them overwinter together. Uh, put it into a queen right hive, you know, just uh, use a newspaper method and that yeah. way just uh, let them overwinter together, conserve all the comb and, and the bees you've got. They'll sort it out and they'll they'll dispatch any laying workers that they don't like. Yeah. Yeah. I like your talk on laying workers. That's really good. It, 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 you have a lot of good information on laying workers. That's good. A lot of misconceptions about laying workers. In my talk? No, in uh, in general, in beekeepers, no, put in the rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. you do you do a good job on that. Okay. I like that. Well, I'm uh, available for weddings, funerals, bar mitzvahs. <laughs> so get in touch. All right, go back to your chair. <laughs> uh, it's terrible treating John that way. He went out and me staying oh, in his house, in his own home. Yeah, my own home. 
boom. Yeah. Hi, David. You you move you move the bees downward to harvest honey. I say I got to start this over. How you move the bees downward to harvest honey? I hear spray around on a towel and close it for a few. Uh, like. Okay, yeah. So I use honey, let's see, honey band. I think it's called a honey band. And I like that a lot. I had a video about a month ago or less where I sprayed a towel. Oh, I actually sprayed burlap. That really works better for me. And it cleaned all but three bees out. It was amazing. You can watch that video. So I like to spray honey band. And uh, there's other things like butyric acid, bee robber, but it smells like the worst vomit that you could ever imagine. I mean, of course, bees are going to abandon, you know, a super when you use that. So, yeah, you can use that. Uh, that that moves bees down. It really does. And we started using that more since small hive beetle are so prevalent in our hives anymore. We don't want to use so much of the bee escape because um, then the bees escape and the beetles are up there in that honey super to take over. So we have to be careful about that. But that works out well. Yeah. Honey Bandit. Thank you for your donation tonight. Oh, here, uh, Canada get, uh, I know, I heard you, I heard Ian Stepler talk about some snow and everything. Winters, uh, yeah, wind chills, cold at times. I want to put my hive in an 8 by 10 shed that has a five, oh, five inches of insulation. What do you think of this strategy? Ah, uh, hmm. I can't really say for sure. I've tried things like this and I've had mixed results because I think like what happens, it can warm up unexpectedly and then your bees are getting too hot in a shed. They might fly. I'm not sure what kind of uh, enclosed. Is it completely enclosed? Um, it's better to have them in a room, a building that's kept around 30 to 40 degrees uh, Fahrenheit and then using red lights, a lot of ventilation. You want to have the, you know, you want to monitor the oxygen level in those uh, buildings as well. A lot goes into this. It really does. So I'm not the, I'm not the person to advise you. You're going to have to really do a lot of research on this. Yeah. I tried to overwinter a bunch of nukes once in a small room and it was really cold outside, but all of those nukes just heated that room up so hot. It, even in the dead of winter, it's crazy. Maybe that's a good way to heat your home. Yeah, you could heat your home that way, John says. Put some bees in there. All right. Okay. Uh, anything else you guys want to ask me tonight here in Missouri? What is the best time of the year to start raising queens? I'm thinking I'll give it a try this year. Got a good answer for you. And the best answer is start when your bees are raising queens naturally. Swarm season, right? So if you can start raising queens about the time that your bees start swarming, that's the ideal time to really have the most It's probably the first. Mother, mother, you know, it was up my really well. Your first thing. Queen queens like in the wrong time. When you do want to raise queens, working on your side for sure. I really um I'm driving down the little rock today. in and out here. Here I am. Am I back, Jessica? Okay. I froze for a minute there. Yep. So I was going to say, I wanted to let you guys know that I really appreciate you being part of the uh, live stream on Thursday night. I appreciate you watching my videos. I make videos just to help beekeepers. I'm not making videos for myself. I'm not making videos for me. I'm making videos to really help uh, beekeepers. So um, every video that I make, I kind of spend some time thinking, you know, what is it that beekeepers really need to know? And I'll work hard to make videos for you guys. So that's important to me to do that. So be sure and be watching all my videos that I spend so much time making. I'm glad we got through most of this video without some um, 
internet problem. We had a little, we were having some glitches off and on now. Probably a good time. It's about eight o'clock. Good time to tell you guys. Appreciate you being here tonight. Thank you so much. Look forward to you guys uh, watching my videos. I'm hoping to make a few videos down here with John uh, this week while we're together. And uh, there's a lot of you there that left donations for us. So thank all of you that uh, helped support the mission of making videos and live stream. It's not cheap for us. So gosh, anything you can do to help out uh, goes a long way for us. Don't forget to be sure. Thank you, Royal. Don't forget to be uh, don't forget and be sure to get that uh, merchandise ordered so you can pick it up at the North American Honeybee Expo January the 4th and 5th. That's coming up in the 6th. It's coming up pretty soon. All right, guys, take care. I'll see you later. And I want to thank Jessica and Sherry and Ronnie and Candy for being here tonight and helping us out. We'll see you guys next time. Take care. Have a good week. Hope everything goes well for you. Mm -hmm.